hyperbilirubinemias is what we will talk about in this video and uh, these are a group of an inherited disorders and there's four of them there's Krigler Najjar there's Gilbert or Gilbert there's Dubin Johnson and there's Rotor now these two are unconjugated bilirubin disorders unconjugated is also referred to as indirect and the next two are conjugated conjugated or direct bilirubin that is involved now Krigler Najjar has two types there's Krigler Najjar 1 and Krigler Najjar 2 and I'll illustrate some of the common trends in that all of these are autosomal recessive with the exception of one and the one that is not is Krigler Najjar 2 which is autosomal dominant and then all of these are essentially not harmful with the exception of one which is Krigler Najjar 1 which is fatal usually uh, in the neonatal period so those are some of the commonalities and the basic exceptions so let's start with Krigler Najjar it's essentially caused by a liver enzyme problem and that liver enzyme is UGT1A1 and sometimes they refer to it as glucuronal transferase now this uh, enzyme is responsible in conjugating bilirubin so when this enzyme activity is abnormal you'll get a whole bunch of uh, unconjugated bilirubin backing up into the into the blood and that produces severe jaundice and icterus now in Krigler Najjar 1 this enzyme is essentially without activity so essentially that results in this being fatal in usually the neonatal period so I'll keep that in mind Krigler Najjar 1 fatal in the neonatal period now Krigler Najjar 2 there is some activity of the enzyme and because of that it's not uh, fatal it's actually pretty benign but you will have very high levels of unconjugated bilirubin and that will of course result in severe jaundice as the primary symptomatology now let's turn our attention to Gilbert or Gilbert this is actually very common up to five percent of the general population has it which is very high and essentially it's just a disorder where you have mildly decreased activity of the enzyme and that enzyme of course is UGT1A1 or glucoronal transferase and as a result there's no real signs or symptoms the exception of course which they love to do on clinical vignettes is that there will be jaundice if there is a state of stress or a state of illness or a situation where the patient has been fasting these three conditions tend to set the patient into a situation of jaundice but otherwise no symptoms and the next one is Dubin Johnson and Duman Johnson really it's an increase in conjugated bilirubin in the blood and it's benign really no symptoms 
asymptomatic. It's just the only thing that really shows up in terms of a pathology is that there's a lot of dark pigment in the liver and that's really the only thing that they can detect in terms of abnormalities. The next one is rotor syndrome and rotor syndrome is even less in terms of uh, uh, symptomatology. It also is uncongregated bilirubin uh, elevation but in addition to it being also asymptomatic the liver actually is normal completely looks normal so there's really not much going on with rotor syndrome so let's take a look at a few vignettes a neonate develops marked unconjugated hyperbilly rubinemia no hemolysis can be demonstrated and other liver function tests are normal there is no bilirubin found in the urine this infant's condition continues to deteriorate and he dies at two weeks of age to which of the following conditions did the infant most likely succumb? Well, of all the hyperbilirubinemias that I mentioned, the only one that's fatal is krigler najjar type 1. So that would be choice A. And finally, a 16-year-old boy comes to the office because he recently noticed that his eyes and skin are yellow. He denies any abdominal pain, nausea or vomiting, fevers, chills, diarrhea, or sick contacts. He does admit to a large amount of stress because his SAT exam is in two weeks and he's concerned about getting into college. He denies IV drug use and has never been sexually active. He reports that he became yellow three to four times during periods when he had a viral illness. His temperature is 37, BP is 120, pulse is 73, respirations are 13. Physical exam does show scleral icterus. Abdomen is soft, non-tender, non-distended, with normal bowel sounds. There is no hepatomegaly. Lab studies show. Well, let's take a look at these labs. Well, in particular, let's concentrate on the bilirubin values. So his T-bili, total bili, is 3.8. And the normal value for T-bili is between 0 0.3 and 1.9. So he definitely has hyperbilirubinemia. His direct bili is 0 0.9. And the normal values for direct bili are about 0 to 0 0.3. And by doing a basic subtraction, his indirect bili is going to be 2.9. And the normal value for indirect bili is 0 0.2 to 0 0.7. So he definitely has elevated indirect bili and elevated direct bilirubin. Which the most appropriate next step in diagnostic uh, studies is to do what? Now, the clinical vignette is really in interesting because this word right here, he recently noticed. So he was normal, and then all of a sudden he developed this jaundice. And this kind of really triggers me to think about Gilbert syndrome because normally there's no real symptomatology it's benign except for this jaundice that tends to occur in states of stress or states of illness which is also described so that really points toward Gilbert syndrome and that's just benign and people just live with it and there's no treatment necessary so the answer to this question is a no further studies at this time